Councillor Fristacki, who's joined us from the City of Yarra. And I don't think there's any other councillors in the room. Um, I'll start, thank you all for coming along tonight. I'll start off by telling you a few of the items the Liberal Party has already announced if elected in November 2018. Most importantly for our region, the Liberal Party will include a South Yarra interchange into the Melbourne Metro One project that Minister Foley spoke about earlier. Since its inception, uh, the Melbourne train network has suffered from the fact that in order to change between lines, you need to go all the way into the city and then come back out again. Melbourne Metro presented us with an opportunity to commence the process of improving the connectivity between lines outside of the CBD. But rather than enhance the connectivity, the Melbourne Metro One, as it's known, currently under construction, will actually reduce connectivity to, on our trade network. For some reason, the Cranbourne Pakenham line is no longer going to have an interchange at South Yarra, removing connectivity to the Sandringham line and its busiest station, Balaclava, located in the city of Port Phillip also removes connectivity to attractions like the MCG, Melbourne Park, and it takes away a second option for you when the tram network has problems in order to be able to get from Balaclava through to Domain. You won't be able to do that under the current proposal for Melbourne Metro 1. For a public transport system in a city the size of Melbourne that needs connectivity between its train networks, this is a backward move. And speaking of backward moves, it's worth noting that after nearly four years, there's not been any advancement in the public transport for fishermen's men. At the last election, the Liberals had a plan to build a deep underground metro train system through fishermen's men, with a train station to be located at the corner of Montague Street and Normanby Road. And had we been successful at the last election, that train station would be under construction right now. It would have continued through Fisherman's Bend, connecting Domain to Southern Cross and on to the airport. Martin Foley has the distinction of being the only MP in the state that at the last election campaigned against a train station in his own electorate. Martin also told the residents of Yarra's Edge that he was opposed to the tram bridge and that would never happen if they voted for him. The residents of Yarra's Edge won't be falling for that again as they absorb the possibility of a tram bridge in the exact location Martin said four years ago there wouldn't be one. And he's included a tram crossing on the already busy Lorimer Street as an added bonus. And as we sit here two and a bit months out from the election, we have no idea what the government proposes as its solution <coughs> to moving thousands of people in and out and around Fisherman's Bend. We have no idea what will be built, how much it will cost and who will be paying for it. The committees, boards and departments that have looked into this are too numerous to name, but we are further away now as to what will be the solution for Fisherman's Bend than we were four years ago. And with the government's recent announcement of a $100 billion metropolitan rail loop <coughs> linking Cheltenham to Werribee via the airport, my fear is that these solutions to transport in Fisherman's Bend will never materialise because all the money will be taken up by this one big project recently announced. In my opinion, none of the elements in Fisherman's Bend such as height limits, development density, schools or parks, or anything else can be planned until we know exactly where the public transport is going. We recently had the planning panel, as mentioned by Minister Foley, and people have made submissions to this panel without actually knowing where the public transport is going to go. The Liberal Party has also committed $1.5 million to the investigation of a port rail connection in order to facilitate the removal of shipping containers from our roads. We are starting to feel a pinch now on Port Phillips roads, especially at the northern end, in and around Port Melbourne and Fisherman's Bend. And a heavy rail connection to our port is essential. Other major rail projects outside of Port Phillip already announced so far by the Liberals include 
planning protection to enable future construction of the rail corridor. Returning V-line passenger trains to Dunnelly, St Arnott and Donald. The Cranbourne to Clyde Metropolitan Rail Extension with two new stations. The Frankston to Baxter Metropolitan Rail Extension with two new stations. Increasing the number of services and trains from, she from Southern Cross to Shepparton from four to eight daily and improving track conditions that allow speeds of up to 130 kilometres an hour. All good quality projects that will provide long-term benefits to our transport system and ease congestion throughout the inner suburbs, the outer suburbs and the regional areas. And of course there would be more to come. I would love to sit here tonight and make a couple of announcements for you, but unfortunately for both of us that won't be occurring and any future announcements will be made by the usual channels at a time determined by the relevant shadow ministers. I'm as disappointed as you are that they would not let me announce anything tonight. Roads. In terms of roads, the Liberals will commit to building the North East Link and the Westgate Tunnel, as, I'll note, will the current government. But only the Liberal Party will connect the two with the East West Link. These three projects will create a superhighway from Geelong to the outer eastern suburbs and take traffic off the already overcrowded Westgate Bridge and Westgate Freeway. I still cannot believe that the current government paid $1.2 billion not to build a road. Our roads have never been more crowded and projects are needed urgently to ease the congestion. In terms of cycling, Beach Road is Melbourne's busiest cycling route. The proposal by the current state government to narrow Beach Road not only makes no sense, but it is dangerous and will result in a less safe environment for the thousands of cyclists that use it every day. So what will you get if you elect me to represent you on November 24th? You'll get someone with a track record of fighting for better public transport in Albert Park. I, along with my fellow councillors on the previous council, fought hard in the face of some loud community and trader opposition to have the Ackland Street tram <coughs> service built. You all know the history of the project and how well the final product has turned out. But I ask you, where was the local member when the Ackland Street redevelopment was going on? He wanted nothing to do with it, but was happy to turn up at the opening media opportunity. And where were the Greens? With the exception of Sue Pennycue, the only MP in the state to offer support to Port Phillip Council at that time, they were nowhere. I remember having a conversation with the local Greens on this. There was a fair bit of heat on councillors regarding Atwood Street, and we, as a council, needed some help to push back. Who better than the local Greens to help us fight for this new piece of public transport infrastructure? Wrong. You, would, you know the response I got. We need to consult with our members, and off they went and consulted with their members for the best part of the next three years. They didn't want to get involved in this controversial project prior to the council elections. I'll let my record speak for itself, and I'll leave it here. Thank you.